Hi, I'm Dr. Joseph Ridgeon. I'm the developer of the Mytho Self Process. And I want to talk a little bit about what makes the Mytho Self Process as powerful as it is. Because I'm going to be doing a program that's called Behavioral Communication Certification this year with my partners in Denmark, Acuity World. The Mytho Self Process is designed around a very particular idea. And the idea is that we all have an imprint that's inherent within us about what we're like when we're at our best. What it's like to be let's say, in a position where you can't put a foot down wrong, where if you could be like that for the rest of your life, your life would turn out perfectly. Now, everyone knows life doesn't always show up like that. Things happen that we don't want or expect. But the ability to get back into that position where you can make good decisions, where you can take action that leads you to the intention, to the outcomes that you want, despite what, what has happened or not happened, is what the myth of self process is inherently about as an applied practice. There's theory behind it, and the theory behind it largely is informed by the idea of mythology as an organizing principle. Now, I know that some people think they know what mythology is, and I use that word very specifically. I don't mean the stories that are told. Even the person who I hold as one of my intellectual mentors, Joseph Campbell, who was a wonderful, profoundly skilled and gifted storyteller, I think held the idea of mythology differently than I do. See, I think of mythology as it's attached to our autobiographical narrative. The way that we create the story of our lives, the story that we tell ourselves to ourselves, the story we tell others about ourselves, and ultimately, the story that others tell us and others about us. You see, that's the autobiographical narrative. And we need to own and shape that story to have the lives that we want to live. That story fundamentally becomes the life we're living and the way we know how to respond to the events of our life. Now, if you want an idea of what your autobiographical narrative is about, pay attention to the stories that you pay attention to. What are the movies that attract you and why? And who are the characters? What are the books that you find yourselves disappearing into? And why do you choose the characters in those books or the scenes or the types of activities that you're most drawn to? Now here's an interesting point. As I more and more worked with people, I found that this was true whether or not the book was fictional or non-fictional. You see, some people are drawn to non-fiction books, but there are characters in those books as well whether it's the author writing about the experiences they've had or something they've done that's miraculous or a biography about someone else or maybe it's a straightforward science or business book but there's something that the stuff that fascinates you taps into that's tied into that autobiographical narrative now I like to talk about your silent brain the part of your brain that's outside of language and this is what organizes you at the somatic level and the mytho self process is very very much as about the somatic process as it is about the semantic process. In other words, the way the body and words go together and become literally one thing, a singularity. See, in this model, there is no such thing as the mind and the body. There's the body-mind, a singularity which drives you to have the experiences that you have in the world. And when I was putting together the mythos self process, I began to understand that very, very subtle movements, what we call micromuscular movements, the way a person gestures and the muscles that they use to create those gestures, changes the experience they have in the world. And this is what informs behavioral communication. So this summer, I'm going to be taking that information from the mythos self process and driving it deeply into the model of behavioral communication that will show you how you can lead others to take action on their behalf or with you or with others in a very powerful, maybe even profound way. But I wanted to give you a little bit of an insight about what this entire process is about. There's much, much more on my website. You'll find a lot of information on my partner's website, acuityworld.com. And most of all, you'll find the information within yourself. And if you give me the chance, I'd love to be the guide who helps you to find that in such a way that it becomes available to you in every way to do what you want to be doing in and with your life. Once again, I'm Dr. Joseph Riggio, and I look forward to seeing you this summer in Denmark at the Behavioral Communication Training Intensive, July 29th to August 8th. Thanks so much for listening.